Well, just once a year we get to see who is donating to political parties, and every year it's a wash with big corporates and big polluters donating big money to the big parties and usually getting big access and big influence over policy making. Uh, last week we got the donations disclosure data for 2021 to 22, and tragically, coal and gas projects, energy companies, and mineral and resources industry bodies all featured heavily with around $2 million gifted to both of the big parties by the fossil fuel companies and their cheerleaders, it's little wonder that no matter who is in government, the fossil fuel sector continues to get almost $11 billion in public subsidies every year in things like cheap fuel and accelerated depreciation, plus direct grants to open up new polluting projects. Now, these industries are not donating millions of dollars because they believe in the institution of a strong democracy. They are donating because it gets results for them. The coal and gas donors' fingerprints are tragically all over Labor's safeguard legislation. Labor is taking money from the coal and gas corporations causing the climate crisis and then proposing laws that allow new coal and gas projects to go ahead. Four big donors represent five of the highest polluting facilities covered by the safeguard mechanism, Woodside, Blue Scope, Chevron and Inpex. And collectively, they've donated $200,000 to the Labor Party just in that last financial year. You have to wonder how much access to the table that bought them. Um, when Labor was designing its weak safeguard mechanism, which allows new coal and gas. Now, Woodside and Santos donated more to the ALP than to the Liberals and Nationals combined. And of course, they now have free reign to open new projects and trash the climate. Projects which damage land and water, which turbocharge the climate crisis and which do not respect and in fact ignore the wishes of First Nations communities. INPEX gave $157,300 to the Liberals, the Nationals and the Labor Party. Now they're a major polluter that is covered by the safeguard mechanism and they're currently seeking support for a carbon capture and storage project that will benefit from the publicly funded Middle Arm Hub. Now, I wonder what legislative concessions and public support their donation will get for them. The Mineral Resources Council, who recently threatened to unleash an ad campaign against Labor unless it rules out a windfall profits tax, declared neither, nearly a quarter of a million dollars in donations to the big parties in 21-22, and still there is no windfall profits tax on the horizon. Santos, which is pushing to frack the Beetaloo Basin and the Narrabri gas fields, received $16 million in public money for its Moomba carbon capture and storage project. It gave $154,000 to the major parties. It's a pretty solid return on investment for Santos there. Tamboran donated $200,000 to the big political parties, the first time they've declared a donation. They also received $7.5 million of public money from the coalition for a natural gas exploration in the Beetaloo Basin. Now, the Greens attempted to disallow that grant in the Senate, but the Labor Party decided to support the grant of that money. No idea what could have influenced that decision. And these, of course, are only the donations that Australians are told about. More than a third of all donations either fall below the disclosure threshold or they rely on weak categorisation and loopholes to stay hidden from public view. That is why the Greens want real reform to get the influence of big money out of politics. My private member's bill to end dirty donations would cap political donations at $1,000 a year no matter who you are and ban donations from industries with a track record of seeking to buy policy outcomes, including the fossil fuel sector. We want to close that loophole that allows exorbitant membership fees and cash for access uh, events to the big parties to completely ignore the disclosure obligations. And we want real-time disclosure of all donations over $1,000 so that when voters go to the ballot box, they know who's pulling the strings of the people that they're voting for. The Greens have been campaigning for years to clean up democracy, and we are hopeful, we are eternal optimists, that we might now have a chance for the government of the day to come to the table and work with us to ensure that politicians, all of us, work in the public interest and not in the interests of donor polluters. Authorised by Al Waters, Australian Greens, Canberra.